there's hope out there There's one thing I don't know What do you better do? What do we better do? Ask how 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 Ask how 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 Ask how 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 What do we better do? Something new, a new gadget, so wonderful, like a light bulb in the dark. But if you think it's not quite right, will you give it one more try? Then it becomes yours. Just like you sitting there at one time, looked at something and went, hmm, why don't you try that? Take your index finger of your choice, tap on your cheek, and say with me, hmm. Yeah. And then they went, what if? They got an idea. They may have looked probably at some kind of problem. They said, you know, what if I didn't have to rake leaves? Or what if I didn't have to touch a door to open it? Or what if there was a new kind of breakfast cereal? Or what if, or so a different way to keep my teeth clean? Or what if, what if, it just keeps going on and on. What if there's something new to play with? And they make a something that addresses that problem and we call that a prototype, right Dr. Claire? We do, Captain Gadget. And a prototype Oh, I always have trouble with the definition of oh, yes, like, actually what is a prototype. Well, maybe somebody out there could help us. Does you, anyone yeah, know anybody, what a prototype that, is? That. It's the very first one. The very uh, first one, a test model. Right. We tested, yes. Super yes. Soaker Squirt Guns, the prototype was made from a two liter pop bottle, a clothespin, a basketball pump, and some tubing. Oh, and then that and he showed, you know, the guy invented it, said this is how it works. And wow, but it doesn't look like that exactly today. So it was the first one, yeah. Right, well you don't... So, that's what they're gonna do in the image event. That's right. Isolate, that's right. get a problem, and make a prototype that solves that problem. So what were you thinking? I was thinking, Captain Gadget, yes. and, I, and I don't want to interrupt you, but right. you know how we are as inventors. We're right. always thinking, that's Love what it. inventors do. Fun. That's what the song so said. Cool. It, it, uh, while you were talking, uh -huh. I was thinking, what if we identified a problem, we found a problem, and we built a prototype using the stuff that we have here on the table and showed the kid how fun inventing really is. You, you mean know, like right now? Just build something right here, right now. Well, I would invent some kind of prototype, but the, I, I don't know what problem I'm going to address. Let I, me I think. Mean, you're going to come up with a problem too. Yes, okay, yes. Go ahead. Let me think. Yeah. I have a problem of my own life okay. we can use. And that is? And that is, is I bump my head a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was unloading the stuff. I, I bumped my head on the table. Yeah, it, it, it's a real problem. Does anyone else ever bump their head? Anybody out there? Yeah. So, Seems like a fairly common problem. Look at this. Yeah. So I do once in a while bump my head, sure. Yeah. So people might need our 
invention. So okay. I think that's a good idea. I'll, I'll get started on a prototype right now. We've got a lot of stuff here on this table, and I can easily yeah. group together Captain some Gadget. kind of prototype wait, wait, wait. that would play. Light bulb, light bulb, light bulb. I have another yeah. idea. Yeah? We get to invent all the time. Sure, I was going to show the kids how it's done. Well, but what if we invited one of the students up to help us build a prototype so they can see what it's like? Okay, that's a great idea. There Let's do that. There are a lot sure. of volunteers that out there. That sounds like fun. Pick somebody out who would like to come up and assist us to build a prototype. Any help? Any help? I think I have Somebody a out there. there in the audience. And what's your name? Gadget, welcome aboard. You met Dr. Claire already. Uh, when you're building your prototype, we always want you to be safe. So what we have, we always, for our assistants, we put on a safety apron. Yeah. Keep his clothes nice. Although it makes him look really, really skinny. Yeah. And a pair of goggles. These will protect your eyes. Those are official invention convention sunglasses. That's a good one. Okay. So, if we're going to really do this, Dr. Claire, you need a journal, right? That's right, Captain Gadget. It's what real inventors use, and it's what all of you will use when you're part of the invention convention. It's where you write down everything it takes to make your invention. The research you do, the problem you solve, even the stuff that doesn't work, because sometimes when you're inventing, the first idea doesn't quite work out. You have to try it a different way. You don't give up. You just... Try a different prototype or change a little bit. This will protect your idea, and if you want to sell it someday and get a patent, your journal will help you do it. They're available at the website, inventionconvention.org. Coulter, I'll take notes for you today, okay? Okay. Uh, Coulter, right here, we've got stuff on the table. What can we use to protect somebody's head? Do you have any ideas? That? How would we use it? Excellent. There we okay, go. turn around, show sure, 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 audience. There we go. Okay, I like the way he's thinking. Now, this does afford a little protection, but it's kind of wobbly, it's kind of hard, doesn't really like absorb any you know, shock or anything. And this would not be a prototype. This is just Coulter with a spaghetti strainer in his head. But it could be part of a prototype if he put like some padding on it, maybe had springs coming out to absorb the shock or whatever. So I like how you're thinking, Coulter, but we're gonna write that down, Dr. Let Claire. Spaghetti strainer, yes. no yes. go. I've got it. Maybe okay. something else, Coulter. Anything on else you could use on the table, yeah, this, Coulter? What do you think? Kind of soft. I don't know if we could so we can use use this. Or, what? There goes a crayon. Um, okay. what, the pillow? The pillow! Okay, how would we use that, Coulter? Okay, very good. Turn around. Okay, very good. Well, I think he's on the that's kind of that's real cushiony, Dr. Claire. And we But could I think we need to attach it in some way, right? right? Does anyone have duct tape? Can we do we have time to glue it on or Oh I think that's a little too permanent, no, Captain fine. Gadget. Let's think. So, um, um, we have this tie on the table. What do you think, Holder? Should we tie it on? We could try that. Let's try what it. What do you guys think? It. Tie it on? There you go. Yeah, I got the pillow. Come with me. Uh, I got these Follow two. Over here. I was going to use these for decorating, but I'm thinking here, if you turn around back to me, I could put one around his head, maybe make like kind of a balloon thing out of it. Right, because I, I hit the front and the sides of my head, so that will help protect my head. You know, this makes me think of a bicycle helmet. Those have been invented for a while, but people have changed them and keep improving on them. Just recently, I saw a foldable bicycle helmet, one that you can put in your backpack and take it anywhere. I also saw another one, the invisible bicycle helmet. You don't even wear it on your head. You wear it around your neck, and if you fall off your bike, out pops your own inflatable airbag to protect your head. So different solution to the same problem. Very cool. Now, that is the beginning. But I happen to have with me today two balloons, and there's this whole area of inventing and engineering called biomimicry or bioengineering, where scientists and engineers look at how plants and animals solve problems, how they stay warm, how they get food, how they protect themselves. 
I was thinking if I fold this one balloon in half, before he ever bumped his head, he could feel something coming up, like, you know, the antenna on an ant or a butterfly. Oh, like whiskers on right. a cat? Do you like that idea? Yeah. Let's try that. I like that idea. I mean, the bumper on my car has a sensor in it, and when I'm backing up, it says beep, 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 but there's something behind me. So this is a new kind of warning system to let us know we're going to bump our heads. Right. I like it. Okay. Let's All right, here we go. Coulter, what do you think? Okay. Pretty comfortable? Okay, so yeah, before you ever hit something, oh, I'm, I'm thinking of a problem though with this prototype. What do balloons do, kids? Oh, yeah. That's right. Maybe we need to change the material or fill them full of foam or put something on the outside so they don't, you know, pop so yeah. easily. This right? gives us an idea of what our prototype might look like, but we'd have to keep developing it. Uh -huh. Definitely. Should we test it? Let's test it, Coulter. Okay, Col Coulter here. Turn around, face Dr. Claire. And I okay. need you to walk, walk towards straight me. towards her. And oh, see? Look at that. Before he knows he's getting there. close before he ever even got... He I can't can walk see around in the dark. Probably. <laughs> very good. Excellent. Well, this has potential, Coulter. Yes. And now we get to do a very fun part of inventing. Something that all of you will do, too. And that's name your invention. When you name an invention, you can name it after yourself. Right. You can name it after what it does. Uh -huh. It can be just a fun, silly name. Coulter, what would you like to call this invention? The Beetle Helmet. The Beetle Helmet. The Beetle Helmet. He feels a Good little bit idea, like a beetle Coulter. with it on. I love it. Coulter, you've been a wonderful assistant today. Yes. I'm going to take the apron. And you're going to take you're home with you. You're going to keep the Beetle Helmet, The though. Beetle Helmet, your Invention Convention sunglasses, and this puzzle pen from Time Warner Cable. They're our presenting sponsor. And on here is their website, Connect a Million Minds, where you can all go to take a pledge to learn more about science, technology, engineering, and math. Here you go, Coulter. Good job, Give buddy. Give me a hand. A lot of those problems, like you could, you could look at problems, medical problems, or safety problems, or problems with plants, growing crops, and stuff. But one of the problems that a lot of times I forget to even mention is fun. And we were messing with this thing while people were coming into the auditorium. This is a Hoberman sphere. It was made by Mr. Hoberman. Yeah, he named it after yes. He named it after himself. This is he's an engineer and this is all that it does. It just goes like that, goes like that, goes like that, goes back like that. Yeah. So he just did it for fun. He thought, huh, that would be kind of something fun to play with. Everybody loves them. He sold a ton of these. Um, you can buy one, sure, of your own, but this is for us to show the assembly. Um, Dr. Claire's got this other ball we found out that Mr. Hoberman also invented. It's called the flip switch ball because it turns colors once you throw it up and it's blue and she it's pink and that's all it does color just for fun yeah so the slinky was a fun thing you can invent something think about all the fun stuff we have in our lives like sports and you know games and movies and stuff just for fun i have a couple of examples i'd like to share one is of a young man in the state of maine and he had the problem, it was his problem. He was loved to play outside in the winter, but every time he went outside, his ears hurt. So he thought, hmm, maybe I could invent something that would keep my ears warm and I could go outside and enjoy the winter. Well, he got together with his grandma, bent a little wire, used some heavy fabric or something, and made a covering for his ears. His name was Chester Greenwood. And this is one of the earliest ones we know of. Dr. Claire owns these, they're in her family. Uh, they're like over 100 years old. And they were very popular. You just, you can see how it's shaped like an ear. You put your, the bat around your ear and hang it on there and go outside and play. Other people, ears got cold. They said, Chester, could I have a pair of those? Can I have a pair? Somebody else, he started selling them. He had a little business going. But there was a problem with these. Not everybody's ears are the same size. Sometimes people lose one. So he goes, hmm, I know. And he invented something that has been around for years. I actually had a pair when I was a kid, your age. And they're earmuffs, exactly. They'll fit anybody. You can't lose just one, you know? He sold a bunch of these, Chester did, to the, the United States government, people all over the place. He became a millionaire. 
a millionaire from selling earmuffs. It's a simple solution to an everyday problem. We found out also that he was the inventor of the yard rake. You rake up leaves, that's a problem. Um, Sometimes, don't get too complicated about the problem because like a teacher one time, her problem was, how am I gonna keep my students' papers together? And guess what she invented with a piece of wire? Paper, Paper clip, yeah. A carpenter and his wife, instead of tying rags around their cuts and splinters, guess what they came up with? Band-Aid. Band-Aid, sure. Simple solutions to everyday problems. What I mentioned too was, sometimes things are invented by fun. And if you change something enough, it could be a new invention. This is a prime pan. There was a group of students that were working in a bakery, and for fun, instead of throwing a football or baseball, they would throw pie pans to each other just to sail them through the air. Well, some guy heard about that and thought, well, that's kind of fun, but what if I change the material and I'll call it the Whammo Flying Saucer, but we know it for the name of the pie company. It's a frisbee, exactly. Before I throw this, let me ask, is this a pie pan? No. Of course not. It's something new, but he designed it after that. And instead of something just for baking, this can be thrown for fun and sports. Heads up, everybody. I have another use of that whole thing. Somebody thought, you know, I can throw a frisbee somebody who's in trouble in the water, fell out of a boat, they swam out on the lake too far, but it's not going to help them just to throw them a frisbee unless the frisbee could float and maybe had a rope attached that I could pull to shore. Well, somebody did that very thing using a frisbee. This thing floats. They patented it, which means they protected it. You could only get it from the, these people. It's called the Save a Life Mini Disc. Very simple, low tech, very effective. I put this rubber band thing around my wrist if I'm going to throw it. Dr. Claire's in trouble, and when I throw it, the cord comes out, and I pull her to safety. Is this a Frisbee? No. No. So you get the point? They changed the Frisbee enough at a different usage, so it's a safety device now, a life-saving device, instead of just something to play with or make a pie in. So it's very simple to be a part of the invention convention. It's a lot of fun, great stuff can happen. Dr. Claire's gonna take it from here. Thank you, Captain Gadget. Well, as Captain Gadget said, it's lots of fun to be part of the invention convention, and it's free because of our sponsors, Lifetime Order Cable and the Ohio Soybean Council Foundation. Today, you guys are gonna take home with you some soybean crayons, and uh, they're really cool because Crayons are typically made out of oil, but these are made out of soy. And soy is grown in Ohio, and you can make lots and lots of crayons from one acre of soybeans. It's a renewable resource, so you guys will look for taking those home with you today. You're also gonna, yeah, that's pretty cool. So your very own crayons, and you'll get an information sheet about soy, because soy is used in a lot of inventions in paint, in, in the crayons, in candles, and even in milk, right, Captain Gadget? Absolutely, a lot of things. So they make it possible, sponsors like that make it possible for you guys to participate for free, and lots of cool things have happened to our inventors. As Captain Gadget said, we've been around for over 20 years, and our inventors have patented their inventions, They've been inducted into the National Gallery for Young Inventors, which is a huge honor. They only choose a few students every year in the whole entire nation. We've had four students inducted in. They've appeared in national magazines like Popular Science. They've been on local television and in the news. Right. And we've also had our inventors on national television. Does anyone um, ever, have you guys heard of The Ellen Show? You guys know The Ellen Show? Yeah. We've had our inventors on that show. Anybody uh, know Jimmy Fallon and The Tonight Show? Jimmy Fallon? Sure. Well, guess what? Okay. Just, just in this past October, we had a first grader from our program. She was a first grader when she competed. She won the first place in first grade. And I know we have some first graders with us here today. She was invited to fly out in an airplane to New York City and share her invention with Jimmy Fallon. She was on The Tonight Show. And we have with us today a video. Her name is Ellie. And we believe that Ellie is the best one to tell you of her invention, Ellie's Jellies and the problem it solves. I love inventions, and I'm okay with kids. So, 
I got together with GE and we found some of the best and brightest kids out there. I think you're going to love these guys. You're going to be amazed at what they came up with. Let's meet our first inventor. Come on over here, Ellie. Hi. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, well, thank you for coming to the show. Uh, El well, your name is Ellie. And where, how old are you and where are you from? I'm seven years old and I'm from Hilliard, Ohio. Oh, wow. Well, welcome to the show. And uh, big news. Uh, last night you, you lost another tooth, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you show it to the camera? Show it to the camera there. Yeah, looking good. Get your tongue out of there or else the tooth won't grow back in. Uh, uh, Ellie, now what, what is your invention? Um, Ellie's jellies. Ellie's jellies. Okay, now how did you come up with the idea for Ellie's jellies? Um, well, I kept ripping my bread and I wanted to make an easier idea so I don't stop ripping my bread with knives. You. You're ripping bread with knives? <laughs> Something wrong with you, Ellie. Now, look, now, <laughs> let's see this thing in action, okay? Here's a plate over here. And then, oh. All right, so this is no more ripping plates. So this is good right here. So you don't want to rip, rip the bread anymore. There's a piece of the bread. And can I help? Yeah, you can have the peanut butter. Okie doke. Thank you. And now what do I do? Um, you take off the lid. Uh -huh. You twist, twist, twist. This is brilliant. <laughs> this is awesome, yeah. And there you go. So you, don't, you don't need a knife. Mm -mm. No knives, no dishes, no parents. <laughs> what, no knives, no dishes, no what? Parents. <laughs> That's right. I always need my parents when I make a sandwich. So this will help me. And Simon, can I? Uh, you're going to put a little more in there. Can I try it? Yep. All right, very good. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's so delicious. I love it. That's really great. Yeah. Ellie is pretty great. So Ellie, Ellie chose a problem in her own life. Raise your hand if you recognize what she used to build her prototypes. Yeah, she didn't spend a lot of money on those. She found everyday items. She built them out of what? Deodorant containers. Exactly. So Ellie can keep developing that, but she certainly found a new way to put peanut butter and jelly on a piece of bread and fix the problem of tearing the bread with a knife. So guess what else happened to Ellie? Not only did she get to go to New York City on an airplane, but the company that sponsored that segment gave her $5,000 for being an inventor. So who knows, one of you might be the next inventor on one of those television shows. Great things can happen to you when you're part of the invention convention. Now here's how the invention convention works. You guys are going to have an invention convention here at your school. Whenever you compete, you, gotta ha you have to have three things. You have to be there to talk about your invention. Your invention prototype has to be there. And the journal is the third item. That's what we were using up here with Coulter. It's what real inventors use. It helps you protect your invention. And if you want to sell it someday and get a patent, your journal will help you do it. Now, from your invention convention here at your school, some of you will be selected to go on and compete at the regional competition. And that's where we give away prizes. Do you guys like prizes? Yeah! which is a $500 college scholarship. And the grand prize is $2,500 in college scholarship money. So it's really easy to be part of the invention convention. You're going to identify a problem, build a prototype, and solve it. And you can't lose in the invention convention, right, Captain Gadget? I don't think you can lose at all. No, it's I, lots of fun. It's, I, it's tons of fun. I was just going to say that. That's the best part about it, because you identify a problem, and you make something that can make the life of somebody or everybody better is so much fun. And speaking of fun, yes. we brought some games with us today. Do so you guys want to play some games? Do you want to play games?
just like we, when we had uh, Coulter up here, we need to get him ready. Put on your safety goggles right there. Andrew. Is it Natalie? Yeah, Natalie? That's Samaya. Okay, very good. And Dr. Claire is going to tell us who's first. These are basically all multiple choice. So listen, but there's three choices. The first question is, what's the first thing you need for an invention? Is it a problem, a screwdriver, or $5? What? The, a problem, yes! Woo! Okay, I feel so alone up here. When they get it right, I would like you all to join me in one big party. Woohoo! Excellent, okay, cool. All right, next question, kids. There is a crop grown in Ohio. It is in candles, it is in crayons. It's, it makes a milk out of it for people who can't drink cow's milk. Lots of different usages. Which of these three crops is it? Is it peanuts, is it wheat, or soybeans? What do you think? Andrew. Soybeans! I think I showed you there are inventions that have changed use. This one is invented, as far as we know, back to the ancient Egyptians. But it's been used to pump water all over the world. It's been used as a little child's toy. Today, even, somebody's figured out how to use it to generate electricity from the wind. Which of these three am I talking about? A toilet plunger, a windmill, or a can opener? Samaya. Not a can opener. I think Natalie. Natalie was next. The windmill! Okay. Here's another. I need you to use your imagination on this one. Ready? Pretend that you are a judge at the invention convention. And you see these three things sitting there. They're kind of similar, but which one do you think could actually be an invention? First one is a pillow that somebody decorated with some markers and glitter paint. The other one is a pillow that somebody said, well, you can sit on this pillow. And the third is a self-cleaning pillow. Andrew. Self-cleaning pillow. Self pillow. Woohoo! Yes. I'm still waiting on that one, everybody. You drool, you wouldn't worry about it, or you could eat cookies in bed, it'd be great. Okay. Um, there are two guys that are famous all over the world from Ohio. They're from Dayton originally. And they made a machine that can carry people up in the air and bring them back down and carry cargo. Which of these three am I talking about? Is it the Left Brothers? Was it Barnum and Bailey? Or was it the Wright Brothers? I think it was Natalie, actually. But, yeah. The Wright Brothers? Yes! This is the last question. I think you should all get this right. What limits, of, I'm gonna give you multiple choice. What limits your possibilities for inventing? Is it your age, where you live, or nothing limits you? What do you think? Everybody Kids, what is it? Nothing limits, nothing limits you! <laughs> That's great. Keep your sunglasses. We also have one of these cool puzzle pens for each of you. Take your seat with our thanks. Thank you very much. When you're building your prototype, you don't have to spend a lot of money. We have three tubs up here, and they all basically have the same thing in them. They're just everyday items that everybody can get a hold of. No big deal. They're just stuff that's just laying around your house. You know what I'm talking about. And we have a box of pipe cleaners and rubber bands behind it to hold these larger things together. We have comprised 12 areas of life that could potentially have a problem. Just let me to clarify, these are not the only problems that the Invention Convention entertains. It just 
12 that we picked out for the game. What we call thinking inside the box. You're gonna pick one of these categories of life. It could be the problem with cooking, a problem with a plant, a problem with an animal or a wheeled vehicle. And you're gonna think up a problem. You're gonna make a prototype using the stuff in the tub and name that prototype all in five minutes. Just to show you how fun and easy it is. So first, Dr. Claire will be picking three students who are seated and wiggling around, and then the rest of you, we're gonna need help. We're gonna need three teachers that you want to come up here and help. So Dr. Claire, give us three students for what we call thinking inside the box. Yes, okay. You gotta be seated, but wiggle around. Okay. There's one! Woohoo! for a long time you guys and we know that you people come up with really great ideas we always like to help the teachers out in this part of the program so we brought along actual thinking caps for them to wear so dr. Claire you want to hand out the thinking caps oh excellent there you go very good okay up here, we already have a wiener. <laughs> oh. oh, I just, I relish saying that. Okay, so, Anthony, what's your number? Number six, Anthony's going to do a problem that has to do with trash or recycling. How to carry it, how to keep it safe, how to keep it sanitized. Okay, and then, what's your number, dear? Three, that is going to be it's a problem that has to do with cleaning something of your choice. Cleaning an animal, cleaning your shoes, a toy, and Olivia. Olivia is 11. That is a problem that has to do with carrying or transporting something. Something that's fragile, something that's heavy. So you're going to get five minutes as a team to use the stuff in the tub, show how your prototype would work, Keep in mind, these are to hold it together if you need it. And you get five minutes. Dr. Claire's our timekeeper. Get set. Go. There we go. All from ready. Let's hear for this team, Anthony. Woohoo! These guys. And Olivia, Mr. Fisher.
little simple prototype. This was a fifth grade girl. Her problem was not earth shattering, it was a simple problem. Her crayons broke when she pushed on them. You know, you press too hard, you know these nubby crayons, people step on them. So she goes, hmm, how can I make a crayon stronger? Well, she thought about putting it in something, and she noticed when you buy a flower from a florist, you usually get one of these little vials that has water in it to keep the flower fresh. And she thought, why don't I take that, and I'll cut it, I'll put a crayon in there so it can't break, make a spring, make a little button on the end. She went ahead and carried it to market, and you could buy these things. This was her prototype. But now you can buy these things and you press on that button on the bottom, real slick, so you could do this. How many of you kids ever watched Shark Tank? Oh, ooh, yeah. Well, that's what we're talking about right here. Think of a, a solution to a simple everyday problem, okay? And it can happen. Only one minute left, okay. It's so fun and exciting, but also think they didn't know what problem they were going to address and they didn't know what we had in the boxes. So you guys have all the time in the world to pick out a problem and get your stuff together. Simple stuff. So Anthony, let's have you come up here first with your teammate. Come on up here, ma'am. And yes, Anthony. Okay. What remind us what area were you trying to figure out a problem in? Is it trash and recycling? Yeah. What was the problem? Do you remember? No, you don't remember. What do you call this thing then? The bucket separator. The bucket separator. So maybe was the problem how to separate different things to recycle? Yeah. How does it work? It looks pretty cool. Don't trash in any bucket. You put the trash in a bucket, then it separates it how? Like a magnet for the metal and stuff? Yeah? And so you got different input. And what did you call it one more time? The bucket separator. The bucket separator! Good idea, very simple. Good job, buddy. Milani, come on up here. Okay, shh. They had a problem, I remember, of cleaning something, right? And what are you cleaning? Buckets. What was our problem? Um, we were trying to clean the bucket. Clean the bucket? Without our hand getting it. Without touching it? Cleaning a bucket without touching it? Wow. How do you, what do you call this? Cleaning buckets. Cleaning buckets? Cleaning buckets, okay. How's it work, Milani? So, we, oh, you got two buckets there. Show us how it works. Okay, okay, so you put your hand in there. Right. Anything else? Then what? We put this in the bucket on the end. Uh huh. So you're getting the soap and the cleaning stuff in there. Okay, then what? Mm, our hand doesn't get wet. 
Very good. Your hand is, yeah, because those chemicals and stuff can like dry out your skin or make it smell funny and stuff. So you, you got this thing attached to there, and it's the cleaning bucket is what it's called. The cleaning bucket. Nice job, Alani. the problem? What area of life? I forget. It's like, um, when you're like walking around and you need like a water bottle or something, you can like drop the water or if you're just holding water, you can just spill it or something. Oh yeah, I was transporting something, right? You may have not noticed from over there, but I spilled my water a couple minutes ago. There's even a no caution wet floor sign over there. So we had a problem literally right before I was called up here. Wow. This is very timely. Yes. Very current. Okay. So spilling water. So what do you call this thing to help out? Um, spill no more. Spill no more. Very good. How does it work? Well, what you do is you wrap the cord either around your neck or it has this little thing where you can like chain, chain it to like your pants. And um, the, what it has <laughs> is it has like a water bottle and, and a bucket and you... Um, you fill the bucket with you fill the bucket with water, and then it has a straw in it, and you just attach it. And so you never spill it. You spill no more. Give him a hand. Great idea. Okay. Well, that's as simple as it is, you guys. The world is big, so are we. Near and far, we all have needs. Look around and you will see Problems waste to energy Building up, who will solve? I know there's hope out there There's one thing I don't know Something new, a new gadget, so wonderful, like a light bulb in the dark. But if you think it's not quite right, will you give it one more try? Then it becomes yours.